I'll tell you guys what, there is nothing more satisfying than getting in a fragrance for the first time, trying it, and immediately loving it. Especially when you're someone like me where basically 100% of your purchases are blind buys, and so you're always rolling the dice a little bit when you're picking up something new. I don't know, there's just a level of satisfaction that you get out of spraying something one time, smelling it, and immediately connecting with it that is kind of addicting, and I think that's what gets a lot of us further down that rabbit hole, and that's how you end up with so many scents. Because a lot of what's fun about this hobby is, you know, exploring it and trying all these new things and, and trying to uh, expand your taste as well. And so this is more of a personal video, I suppose. I'm gonna be sharing with you guys some scents that I really connected with immediately off the first sniff. I think a lot of these are ones that some of you might relate to as well. They're very likable, and there's something just kind of unique about each and every one of these. And so today, that's what we're gonna be going over. I'll link these down below if you wanna do some shopping around, hit up some discounters. They're generally gonna be uh, available below retail price. Also, I've got a mailing list and texting list you can sign up to if you're on the hunt for anything rare, discontinued, hard to find, um, anything that you could think of, uh, new discontinued scents, older ones, uh, things that are just not often in stock and kind of pop up sporadically. Every time something within that category there uh, shows up, I do send out a notification. So it's kind of going to be the place to be if you want to pick up some things that are hard to get. First one here, a little bit of a newer release, it's Narciso Rodriguez Blue Noir Parfum. So this was kind of uh, one that came up out of nowhere because the other flankers have been out for a while now and then there was kind of a gap. Uh, they hadn't released anything for a few years, I believe. And then all of a sudden we got this parfum release, what, a year or two ago. And looking at the note breakdown, when this one was launched, immediately it caught my attention because this one features Iris and I love Iris. And it's one of those deals where when you look at it on paper, you haven't smelled it yet, you don't know if you're actually gonna be getting a ton of that note or if it's more just kind of thrown in there for marketing. And so going into it, I didn't know if I was really going to like this one a lot or not. Turns out I do, and it really is quite a bit different than the rest of the line. The EDT, EDP, uh, Eau de Toilette Extreme. This is going to be the sweetest one, the most rich, the most dense, and that's what I like about it. It's a lot more interesting than those others. And nothing is wrong with the existing fragrances within this line. They are a bit fresher, more woodier, probably gonna be easier to wear, and more versatile, but also this one's pretty versatile as well. So. Still one that I think you could get a lot of use out of. And for me, as soon as I smelled this one, I knew it was a hit. And pricing on this one has worked its way down considerably since it first came out. So if you can get this for around 60 to $70, you'd be doing good. Next up, we have Guerlain Lome Ideal Eau de Parfum. Picked this one up just because it was getting all of the attention, all of the talk, had to try it for myself, and I'm glad I did because I love it. It's got almond, cherry, some vanilla in here. It's a very unique scent, and in fact, the whole line is quite a bit unique, and they all stand out uh, for one reason or another. The Extreme is also really good, and it's always kind of a, a trade-off, a toss-up, because I love the Extreme and the EDP so much. At this point, I kind of just interchanged them because the Extreme was also one that as soon as I smelled it, I immediately loved it. So I guess you could call it a tie or just say that I'm kind of, you know, featuring this one instead on this particular day. But again, they are both instant hits for me. What I like so much about these is the fact that they have this classiness about them that you don't always get from other designer scents. And yes, technically niche, whatever, but we're talking designer price point here, around $100, sometimes a bit less. And so within this price range, there are some classy and more sophisticated scents. There are also a lot that are not and a lot more playful. And so this is one that really stands out because of that more premium uh, kind of smell that it gives off. And this next one is the perfect example of something that is not so much a grown up and premium smelling scent, but a little bit more of a playful one. Also, um, actually, yeah, not too far off in pricing here. This one's usually around $80 or so. Azaro, Wanted by Night. Very popular release. Everybody knows it at this point. And so for me, when I first got it in, it was an instant hit. It's got cinnamon, tobacco, some fruity notes in here. 
you get some of that original wanted DNA, but it truly is a nighttime version of that. And because of that, because of the tobacco and the cinnamon warm spiciness, it just has a lot more of an interesting scent profile overall. I find the original to just be a little bit boring and bland because it's kind of modeled after Invictus, which is great in its own right, but also a bit boring in the grand scheme of things. Uh, this one takes it a step beyond that and it's just a lot more intriguing. Even after all of the other flankers that have been released since this, I still think this one holds up great. And if you can get this one below retail price, it's always worth picking up. Prada Luna Rosa Black was another instant hit for me. You know, I tried this one for the first time and was like, yeah, this is really good stuff. It's uh, kind of mysterious and overall different because it's not like what you would expect to smell from a designer brand and from uh, a scent marketed for men, if that makes sense. And I'm not saying that this is some niche quality scent or anything like that, something that's super unique, but it is very powdery and very dusty. It has tonka and amber, and that's basically the extent of it. They have one other note in there, I believe some sort of floral type note, but it's tonka bean through and through. Again, some of that amber giving it a little bit of a sweetness under that dusty powdery undertone. This is definitely not for everybody. So be warned, okay, if you're gonna make a blind purchase on this, make sure you understand what this is, okay? This is not fresh, it is not aquatic, it is not traditional in any sense. If you are familiar with Bulgari Man, uh, or I'm sorry, Bulgari Black, or uh, Midnight in Paris, which is a discontinued set. They actually, both of those are discontinued. If you're familiar with those, this is kind of modeled after that DNA as a whole. And there's a reason why those didn't make it very long. This type of thing just doesn't really do as well as a lot of other releases. I'm surprised this one is still around. If you're wanting something more blind by safe from the same line, Prada Luna Rosa Carbon would be a great option for you. Even the new Ocean EDP, Ocean EDT, those are much more blind by friendly. But this is gonna be one that definitely was something special when I first smelled it and still love this stuff to this day. Quite a bit more unique than a lot of other things out there. Next up we have Hugo Boss Bottled Parfum. So everybody's doing a parfum and this is the Boss Bottled Parfum. This one has orange, iris, and leather in here. It smells fantastic. Another iris scent, I know it's uh, not surprising. I'm sure if you've watched my channel, you would know I like that sort of thing. This smells great. It still does have some of that Boss Bottled original DNA in there, like some of that apple. It smells really good. It's not quite as apple cinnamon forward as the original or Boss Bottled Intense, but you get bits and pieces of it. Kind of just like uh, Boss Bottled Oud. That one still has that kind of um, OG DNA. That's kind of what this one's doing as well. Although there's no Oud here, you might find this one to be a bit more likable than Oud if you're really sensitive to that note. This does have a really nice creaminess. Uh, a lot of that's coming from the orange iris combination, which works out really well. Uh, same thing is used in Armani Code Absolute Gold. It uses that same combination, and it just gives it a really nice kind of uh, comforting, sweet uh, type of smell. Again, if you're not a fan of iris, this isn't gonna be your cup of tea, just like Blue Noir Parfum we talked about earlier. But if this is something that kind of looks interesting to you, I don't really think you can go wrong with this. If you are tolerant of iris or you really like the note, you're probably gonna like this stuff. Is it the most unique release within the line? Probably not. I would say Boss Bottled Elixir right now is, is kind of you know in first place there. But this is still a really good release. It's easy to like. And we will end this one here with a, a fresher scent, and this one is Issey Miyake Blue Astral. This one's got lime, amberwood, and coriander in here, so it's gonna be, again, fresh compared to a lot of these other scents. However, it's not your typical fresh scent, and that's what I love so much about it. You know, at this point, with so many aquatics and fresh scents and blue fragrances and that sort of thing out there on the market, which I have a lot of them, it's harder to get impressed by something in that fresher category. Generally, you kind of work your way over to sweeter scents because that's kind of 
where a lot of the more interesting, unique blends are going to be. However, this is one that really shocked me in a good way. I was like, yeah, you know what? This is something that is actually interesting for the spring and summertime, something a bit different that I hadn't smelled before. And so I would say if you're looking for something different and unique for warmer, more mild weather, and I mean, if you wanted to, you could wear it in wintertime as well, check out Blue Astral. It's one of those things, and I've talked about this before, within this line, there are a few hidden gems. This is one of them. You keep going and there's going to be some that kind of are a little bit more boring and cookie cutter, but they do have some really, really impressive fragrances hidden within this very vast line of fragrances and flankers. You just have to know where to look and this is one of them. Alrighty guys, that's going to do it for me. Um, some fragrances that I immediately fell in love with that first sniff. I want to hear from you down below. What are some scents that you tried for the first time and immediately were hooked on them and knew that it was going to be something that you were going to wear for a long time? I'll link these down below. And again, if you're on the hunt for anything rare, discontinued, or hard to find, jump on my mailing list, texting list. Also, you have uh, like four days left to get entered to win a 10 fragrance bundle or $500 cash. If you click the very first link below, you can see how to get entered there. Uh, within that bundle, there is Stronger With You Absolutely, Dior Own Parfum, uh, Sauvage Elixir, Dolce & Gabbana The One, a Royal Night, and many more. All of those are brand new in box fragrances that you have the opportunity to win or that $500 cash. So there's two drawings. The first is gonna be for that bundle. The second drawing is for that cash prize. So there is the opportunity for two people to win if you were really lucky. Um, so that's something pretty cool. Like I've said before, my goal is to continue to expand those and really start putting together some big bundles and some bigger cash prize and maybe make it to where there could be three winners or something, but kind of have to build it up slowly. Hopefully you guys stick along for the ride. If that's boring for you right now, I promise uh, they're gonna get much better here in the future coming up in the new year. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.